Um, <laughs> which, uh, you know, was fun to watch, uh, even though it wasn't much of a soccer game. Um, you know, it really did kill the play, but it was fun to watch. Yeah, it was fun. I guess, you know, a lot of people tuned in for that just because they were flicking around and they're like, oh, look at that. There's a snow, something going on with snow on ESPN. That's, yeah, well, I, think the biggest, I think the biggest comment during that game was, why didn't they use an orange ball instead of a yellow ball? Yeah. But apparently, apparently uh, I read somewhere, I think on Facebook, that Adidas has the orange ball and Nike uses a yellow ball. So that's why it was a yellow ball and not an orange ball. Yeah, well, Nike, they've got to do some research because yellow, <laughs> yellow, yellow balls are hard to see on white surfaces. A bright orange ball, however, is much easier to see. So somebody at Nike is sleeping on the job. Um, all right. Neon green. Yeah, <laughs> neon green would be fine, too. Anything but yellow. Um, yeah. I could barely tell the difference. But anyhow, yeah, I mean, let's lump the Costa Rica-Mexico game it's into one big slab. Because there's really not much you can say about the game. Costa Rica. I mean, what, I mean, am I going to criticize someone for not playing up to par in the middle of a snowstorm? I mean, the only thing I'm going to say about the Costa Rica game specifically was how well DeMarcus Beasley played, um, and that I actually um, said in my, the article before um, the game was played that, hey, don't be surprised if we see DeMarcus Beasley play at left back. So I'm just patting myself on the I, back. I know you said that, but I was still surprised. I you know if you looked hey, at he, he panned out though he panned out it did work um, yeah. although they you know the Mexicans team as well as the Costa Ricans spent a lot of time attacking that side of the field as well they should yeah thinking the same thing all of us are thinking what the hell is Demarcus Beasley doing playing left back didn't we try that already did it <laughs> not really work out that well um, so you know um, it, it is what it is and I was just happy to see that he still has. Uh, some form. He's still got some legs. He can oh, still yeah. run. Um, but the Mexico game. Um, well, you know, that whole leading up to that Costa Rica and Mexico match was pretty much all of it, you know, uh, tarnished by and everybody talked about. It. I mean, Brian Strauss must have, you know, become an overnight soccer writing sensation there at Sporting News with that article all about he's the American. He's had a pretty good, uh, he's had a pretty good, uh, career i hope he knows prior, prior to this but i think he became a more common name amongst uh soccer fans he will never write another soccer article like that again <laughs> <laughs> i mean don't you think no. unless he manages to capture uh more uh more strife who's gonna but, talk to him now well none of, none of which was uh, none of the uh, none of the hoopla was really his fault i mean he posted it as anonymous i think anybody's still going to talk to him i think people will still talk to him as anonymous he didn't you know he didn't out anybody yeah um yeah i i, I don't see that hurting him i see you know the possibility of getting a uh a us press release or a press badge being an issue <laughs> yeah, I, I know, I'm not sure if uh, the U.S. Soccer Federation is really going to be overly happy and uh, eager to get him back in the locker room, but we'll see. Well, you know how tight that community is, how yeah. tight-knit that community If you, you piss a few people off, Our it's going to be very <laughs> hard. You're on, a, you're, on a, you're, on a, you're on a very long blacklist. Yeah, exactly. You know, but the thing that really got me about that whole controversy, I didn't find it that controversial. No. I mean, some people did. People, there were two extremes, Brett. One extreme was the players should shut up. They're stupid and they're a bunch of whiners and they can't play. And the other extreme was they should fire Jurgen Klinsmann. You know, I mean, isn't there some sort of middle in between point, you know, that's a part of this discussion here? Like, well, maybe the players had a point that, you know, maybe they shouldn't have aired it publicly. Um, no, it wasn't just players. It was also. Uh people within the ussf circle i yeah. mean it could just be other soccer writers other bloggers could be uh soccer uh, i mean actual players itself you know he didn't really specify he specified that it was this wide range of you know the consensus inside the locker room well no so, he said yeah it was like 11 were, there were some anonymous players but yeah there was also other sources as well sure but let's face it it was the players comments that really what uh, that's what everybody was talking about I don't care what a guy inside FIFA says, but to see for the first time since I've been following, which has been, what, 
following the U.S. national team for 30 years or more. It's the first time I've seen um, this kind of out of the locker room, behind the scenes gabbing going on. So it is kind well, of, it, you know, a big deal. Yeah, and you know what seems strange to me is that all the players that came out were vocal after the article came out. None of them really disagreed with anything that he said. That's they basically true. just said, you know, this is locker room talk. You should have stayed in the locker room. Yeah. You know, yep. If you want to say something, stay in the locker room. Don't out it out to the media. Don't do this, you know. But they never really said, you know what, Brian's article is completely wrong. We're not divided. You know, you had uh, you had some people, like I think it was Howard that came out and said that um, that he did, he was unaware of a uh, American and German-American divide. Yeah. Uh, Bradley said that the players should just keep their mouths shut. Um, Bo Conegra said that he understands why Klinsman left him off the roster and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but none of them said, you know what? I think Klinsman's doing a great job, and that he's uh, he's you know bringing us up to the type of uh, game that we want to play. I they think... all flat out said, uh, you know, they just left that part out. I guess I don't know. Yeah, I mean, this listen in the end, this I think helps Jurgen Klinsman yeah. at least understand um, where his players stand, and I think maybe they move, can move forward from that. And um, you know, I think when he, when Jurgen said, "Well, I, I, it's not my job to explain to the players," you know, uh, mm-hmm. and make sure. Well, yeah, it is actually your job, and I don't think he meant that. I really yeah. don't. I think you know, I think he he knows that he's got to communicate with these guys better, and I think that's kind of what the article said. And so, um, you know what, it'll all blow over, and it and it has for the most yeah. part. You know, you, you know the best player quote of all that was was that Hercules Gomez came out and flat out said, "You know, I love it. I love the article. It was great because it's shown that you guys actually freaking care. You know, yep. It wasn't just you know, oh, we'll just uh, we'll sugarcoat this and do what this. You know, they they're actually showing interest. They're actually showing concern, and they're actually showing that they care for the team. So yep. he, his his quotes were great. I loved them. Yeah, and Jurgen was just kind of like ah. You know, these things happen when you try to change a system. Yeah. Um, and, of course, you know, maybe the argument was, well, yeah, I mean, it, they're going to happen, especially if you don't help them figure out how to make the change work, which was kind of what the players were saying. Oh, yeah, you're changing the system, but can you please help us understand what you want from us? Mm-hmm. Um, now, the only, you know, thing that didn't kind of ring true to that, what that statement I just made was the guy who said, hey, we're athletes. We shouldn't try to play this kind of ball. We should just go back to playing the kind of old ball we were playing before. Well, I don't know who that was because it was anonymous. But you know what? It's obvious at this point that's not going to happen. So I'm not even sure why that particular person even said that because that's not. Although, Brett, we did kind of go back to blue-collar ball versus Mexico in Azteca, didn't we? Oh, and especially against Costa Rica, but I think the weather had more to do with that. But yes, it seemed like right. the team really came together. You it, know, my the defensive line I really was hesitant on and I was really concerned with. Yeah. Um they came through. I yeah. mean, it was a completely different line than I thought. Yeah. I said it was possible to have Cameron play right back, but I didn't see uh Clinton actually trying it. But Look, Cameron played right back today for Stoke. Oh. So I can, well, okay, this, he didn't play very up, well, but he played yeah. right back today for Stoke. This brings me up to a good, a good, I don't know, good question, but a question. Say when like Trundle and Chandler and uh, Fabian Johnson are healthy. I mean, do we put the, we do we, do we slot them back at wing backs and go back to our normal style of what we were trying to do beforehand, or um, do we? I mean, do we push Demarcus Beasley up to left mid, or do we say you know try say having Chandler? Well, that right mid instead in front of uh, in front of Cameron. I think that depends on whether or not Johnson Fabian Johnson is getting p- PT, um, and whether or not um, Chandler performs, uh, you know, in camp leading up mm-hmm. to you know because that's every you know JK Klinsman says that all the time. Well, I'm going to play the guys who are playing best in camp. So you know what if if Chandler outperforms. Cameron on that right back, or even outperforms Torundolo, then he's going to start. Um, that's kind of my my read on it. And when he, like I was, like I was saying, what about trying Cameron, keeping Cameron at right back, but then throwing Chandler at right mid? You'd still have the availability of his pace getting up and down the pitch. Yep. Well, he's a lot faster than Zusi. Yeah, yeah, that's a big thing too. Plus, it offers uh, up you know Chandler's service into the box as well as uh, taking on defenders. Yeah. I mean, it it offers us width. 
and pace. Something I, that we drastically missed in the Klinsman era. I don't think Chandler is a real popular guy right now. So not, <laughs> not only for the fact that it took him so long to play, but the fact that he had such a horrible game uh, versus well, Honduras. To be, to be, to be fair, uh, Fabian Johnson had a pretty poor game that game, too. Yeah, everybody had a pretty yeah. horrible game that um, game. But people particularly picked on Chandler. He did stand out as pretty awful. I that mean, game. He, he got juked a couple times, too. That made him look really bad. But yeah. the most positive note on that back four uh, for Mexico, I'm going to officially call Matt Bessler Matt Beasler today because he <laughs> earned it. He earned it. And I now feel yeah. bad, even though his name is correctly pronounced Bessler, um, based on his ancestry, I will go ahead and pronounce it Beasler from here on out because of his performance versus Mexico. I thought it was fantastic. The guy looked like he'd been playing for the national team for, you know, this looked like his 10th cap, not his first he, cap. Yeah, I agree. He did look solid. Um, and while we're talking about the back line, that, that area, um, I will go out and say uh, Guzan looked very sharp in the two games. Oh, yeah. Great. Uh, easily my man of the match for both games because he was tested the most. I yeah. Mean, out in the snow, the, our, our entire outfield really didn't have much of a chance to really stand out. Now, uh, it was just a sloppy game as a whole because of the weather. But, I mean, Guzan was just solid in both matches. He picked up two clean sheets, tallying, taking his tally up to seven for the national team. Yep. Uh, I mean, I mean, I, 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 there were, I mean, I felt pretty comfortable with him. And I, at this point, I feel pretty co- more comfortable with him in the, in the goal than I did with Howard of recent. Well. <sighs> it, 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 it's getting to that point, you know. Yeah, I, I've, I've always felt comfortable with Guzan and Gold. I never had a problem with Guzan. I didn't even I didn't lose a wink of sleep because no, Guzan was going to start. Yeah, oh. I knew. I just knew <laughs> he was going to be fun. Problem to have is when you have him as your backup goalie. Yeah, oh. and can you imagine when Brad Friedel said, I'll, "I'll come out of retirement if you need me." Well, no, we don't need no. you. <laughs> nope. Um, Stay in your pitch. The only guy who really stood out as having a really poor game versus Mexico in a lot of ways was Adu to me. Um, he seemed caught in two minds too many times. <laughs> like, oh, what am I going to do with this ball? I don't, I'm not sure where to, where to put it. What am I going to Oh, I lost it. Darn it. You know, and that yeah. kept happening over and over. Now, Beasley, he had some moments, too, where on the left-hand side where, you know, he made some useless clearances, etc. But, I mean, let's face it, they were going at Beasley all game long. So he's going to have some mistakes. Yeah, exactly. If you, if you get all the attention, you're bound to make a mistake or two here and there. Yeah. I didn't have a problem with uh, Beasley in, against Mexico. I mean, he had some fluffs, but I thought he overall I thought he played a really good game. Um, yeah. As far as ADO is concerned, I, at the beginning of the game, I made a couple comments to people. I'm like, oh, Jesus, not ADO. Yeah. And <laughs> 10, 10 to 15 minutes in, I'm looking back around. I'm like, okay, okay, he hasn't really had any uh, – any issues yet? And then as I say that, it's just like issue, issue, issue. And I'm yep. like, I mean, he didn't have a terrible game, but there were just there were some some obvious moments where it's just like, oh, what are you doing with the ball? And I mean, I will I will even go out and say there were a couple points where Michael Bradley held on to the ball too much, especially mm-hmm. against Costa Rica and Mexico. Maybe he didn't have an option to distribute, but I mean, it was just times where I was just like, get the ball off your foot. But I thought Michael Bradley had a good game overall in yep. all in both games. Yeah, yeah, but, he, he lost the ball a couple times, but you know what? Other than that, he was. I thought he was great. Yeah, I agree. I agree completely. Um, you know, and uh, Altidore getting pulled for EJ at the end. That was a little. I, I'm not sure what the hell that. <laughs> I mean, they said he said Altidore was running out of gas, but clearly, looking at Altidore's face when he came off the field, he he thought he still had a lot of gas left in the tank. But yeah, I guess you want fresh legs chasing I, the Mexicans. So um, I'm glad you I'm glad you brought Josie up because there there's been a couple couple posts on multiple forums saying like. You know when when is when is it going to be too many games of Josie just not scoring before we just replace him? And <laughs> I, I always go back to the point that I mean he does all the small things. He's doing a lot of the small things, nice, but he's not getting any service inside the th- final third, especially getting, against Mexico. All, all of his service is occurring at the halfway point with mm-hmm. his back to the goal, trying to hold on to the ball. Yeah. If you watch if you watch the Costa Rica game, that was probably one of his best games to date, and that's Absolutely. because he received the ball. In and around the box, and yep. he's the one who started, you know, the goal scoring chance. Yeah, you know, he's no doubt who, about it. It was his he pass. Took, he took a couple shots. Well, he took a shot. Know. That's right, and it bounced off, and Dempsey finished. Which-